Welcome to Sense of Style. I'm Stuart. Nine perfect fragrances for eight different moods. And fragrances are an art form, much like music. Like music, when it comes to like a certain mood, you know, you're listening to a certain kind of music to match your mood, right? If you're in a really, really bad mood, you don't want to listen to something super happy. It's just going to be annoying. It's the same thing with fragrances. You want a fragrance that's going to support your mood. And that's why we collect fragrances. One of the reasons we do it is, you know, you need fragrances that match situations, you know, like a work fragrance or, or you know, a party fragrance, that kind of thing. But you also want one, ones that match your mood. So that's why we have so many. Now, I do have... Um, two fragrances for one mood because I just, I couldn't decide. But basically we've got eight different moods and we're trying to match them with fragrances. This'll be interesting. Mood number one is playful. And there's a perfect house for this. The most playful house for me is Jean-Paul Gaultier. I mean, you just look at the bottle here, the male torso, you know, it's a, it's a party house. It's a perfect house uh, for a playful party mood. And I went with Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mal Elixir. I do prefer Le Parfum, but when it comes to like partying, this is a perfect party fragrance. It's very, very sweet. You've got vanilla, tonka, and honey, and it's very loud. It's very strong. And it, you know, it's just, it's fun. It is a perfect fragrance for that. Yes, you do get a little bit of the, the mint and the lavender, uh, the, the Le Mal DNA when you die down, but that's not really what makes this fragrance uh, perfect for a playful. It's the sweetness. It's the, you know, how powerful it is. I think it's a perfect fragrance for a playful mood. Mood number two is pride. And pride can come from a number of different situations. Usually it's being recognized publicly in some way, but it could also be, you know, you, your son or daughter are getting married. So things like graduation, maybe retirement ceremony, or maybe you've just reached a goal and you're going out with friends to celebrate, that kind of thing. But for situations like that, uh, I, for me in particular, I want to do something high-end, something special, something fragrance, a fragrance you wouldn't wear all the time. For me, that's a house of homage, a very expensive house. And in particular, I'm going with Reflection Man. It is my favorite fragrance. And I always keep a couple of milliliters of Reflection Man just in case, you know, just in case it's a special occasion. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be proud, you want to reward yourself. You worked hard for this. So, yeah, I'm going with the Reflection Man. I do have a clone, and I wear that on a, on a daily basis. It's a good clone. But, yeah, if I'm getting honored or if I've re reached a goal, I'm going with the high-end stuff. And the great thing about Reflection Man is it's perfect for, like, a formal event because, you know, it's white florals, uh, iris, sandalwood there's a powdery element you've got a little bit of rosemary it's absolutely perfect fragrance for something like that so yeah reflection man mood number three is rushed and this happens a lot you know you're in a in a really busy mood i've got a huge fragrance shelf you just want a really good dumb reach and this is a fragrance that i've been reaching for regularly it's zadig and voltaire's this is him it's a relatively new fragrance for me but it, it, for me, it fits the criteria perfectly. Generally, with a dumb reach, it's a dumb reach, right? So you don't want to have it be super expensive. This is kind of mid-range price, but you want good performance. Performance here is really solid. And this particular fragrance is very pleasant and modern. It's not going to make me smell sort of weird in any way. It's a really nice vanilla, warm, spicy fragrance, but it's got a little bit of a twist. So it's got your vanilla and your black pepper, um, but it's also got incense which gives it a balsamic feel so it's a little bit different it's not 100 percent, but this is a fragrance that i have been reaching for regularly in dumb reach situations for me it's perfect mood number four is bored and tired and for me this one was so easy there's only one fragrance that'll snap me out of it i just one whiff of versace arrows flame and I will feel a little better. It'll perk me up a little bit. I love this fragrance for doing that. It is a really nice mixture of fruitiness and sweetness. It's got a prominent vanilla note here. You've got three citrus notes. You've got chinato, you've got lemon and orange. It is very fruity. I get orange more from this than anything else. And uh, really good performance, but it's just, 
Just smelling it makes me feel better. And, you know, honestly, if Eros Energy is half as good as this fragrance, it's going to be a phenomenon because it's new. Um, but, yeah, this I really doubt it'll be better for me than this. Mood number five is anxious and vulnerable. Maybe you're agitated about something. Maybe you're trying to sleep and you can't sleep. You're frustrated, right? For me, you need something that's soothing and grounding. And I couldn't decide between two here because one of them is more personal for me and then the other one is more of a general one for most people. But I went with the personal one is Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Beau. Now, that's very me-specific. I grew up in the Caribbean until I was like seven years old. And coconut was such a great note for me. Uh, the very first birthday party I had a coconut. I love the smell of coconut. And the coconut here is mixed with vanilla. It's very sweet. It reminds me a lot of Caribbean desserts that I had as a kid. And this one is just, I find, very, very soothing. It brings me right down. But I think for most people, fragrances, I don't hear much about. This is Pour un homme de Caron, the house of Caron. And this is actually a niche house that is quite inexpensive. But this is the ultimate soothing fragrance, I think, in general, because it's mostly based around lavender, like a musky lavender. There's a vanilla note in here, but it really doesn't work as like sweet vanilla. It's the fragrance is originally from 1934. So we're not talking about modern vanilla in any way. It's kind of light, but it rounds off the hard edges of the lavender and makes it come off a really smooth and musky lavender. And lavender is a great relaxation note, whether you're pouring lavender bath oil bath oil into your bathtub or you know spraying a bit on your pillow i think it's scientifically proven to relax us and this one is fantastic for doing that now uh this fragrance comes and goes it's been around since 1934 at the moment it's really hard to find you're going to pay a lot of money for it when this is in stock it's usually going for between 40 and 50 bucks don't pay more than that for it because it is quite synthetic but it is definitely soothing it's definitely grounding it's definitely comforting Mood number six is nostalgic. You know, sometimes you sit around, you like remember the good old days and you want to get a dose of nostalgia. For me, that is Calvin Klein's obsession. Now, I really like Dracar Noir, but my original bottle of Dracar Noir, I ran out of it about five years ago, but I still have plenty of this left. I don't like the new formulations of Dracar Noir. It's been thinned out. And while I don't mind the original, the, the, the new formulations for obsession, I do have a vintage bottle, a fair amount left, and this one just brings me back. And, you know, I, I really love it. Now, when it comes to scent, it's not that different than a lot of modern fragrances. It has some herbal notes, but they are buried. This is really basically amber, like a dark amber, because there's a myrrh in here, and, and cinnamon. So, you know, it's not going to smell as old as some of the older old school fragrances. Beast mode performance with this bottle. But as I said before, the newer formulations, they're not as thick and, and, and deep as this, but they're not bad. So it is still worth a purchase, but uh, yeah, this bottle is the one I'm going with. Mood number seven is confident and fearless, and there are a couple of fragrances that I wear when I am feeling like I can take on the world, like I'm feeling really confident, really bold, and I don't care what other people think, and I'm, I have no problem taking a risk when it comes to fragrances. One of them is Toy Boy, but another one, probably my favorite for this kind of mood, is Black Orchid by Tom Ford. And I use a lot of this. This is just a decant, but this is my second decant because I whipped through the first one. I, You know, I'm talking about almost 20 milliliters of this that I've used, um, which is a lot for me. And it's because it's a fragrance I'm not going to wear most of the time because of that orchid note, which is quite feminine. But when you're fearless and confident, you don't care what other people think. And I mean, I have, after all, I am a fragrance guy, right? So I need to really represent when it comes to unisex fragrances. And this is very unisex. Now, the feminine orchid note is mitigated by some other notes. It's very, very sweet. There's a lot of vanilla and chocolate in this. There's a very earthy quality to it. We've got patchouli and truffles. So that grounds it a little bit, but it's a strong fragrance and the orchid note is undeniable. But when I'm in the right mood, I don't care if people think I'm wearing a feminine fragrance. The last mood is romantic. 
So, you know, if you're on a date night with your wife or, you know, you're going on a date for me, I'm going today with, uh, Prada Luna Rosa black. Now there are a lot of really good romantic fragrances, usually on the fresh side. Uh, I live in Canada. It's kind of cool here. So, uh, I think I'd wear this probably more than anything else. This is one of my top three favorite designer fragrances as well. And this is a really nice, sweet and musky fragrance. You're going to get uh, tonka and amber, and then you're going to get angelica and musk. I, I really like musky fragrances, and uh, the sweetness one here is really good. Great performance. It's a Prada, so it's smooth, and it's a little bit more mature, which matches my age more than anything. So, yeah, I'm going with this one. I'm, if I'm in a romantic mood, but uh, yeah, I think I think I really do think this is often overlooked. Men don't like to talk about moods, um, but we all have them. I know I do. And uh, I think, yeah, being in the right mood, the right fragrance, important to get it right. Thanks for watching.